Cliff Molak, thank you so much for joining us here. Absolutely. In the, this is our Kins 5 Digital Center. It's mm -hmm. kind of exciting. This is cool. You're in yeah. the Digital Center right now. <laughs> so uh, we appreciate uh, your time here, and I know it's been a long day for you. So our, our, our topic, what we wanted to get into, is something that is very near and dear and important to your family. I understand that. Uh, David's Law, or I guess we're calling it David's Bill. It's, it's David's Law. It's David's right. Law, and hopefully it gets to the point of becoming law here in the state of Texas. Right. right. So tell us a little bit about how uh, it originated. So this whole thing started after David passed away. About a couple weeks after, we were doing some interviews explaining kind of what happened, and at somewhere along the lines, this snowballed into someone mentioned the idea of possibly doing a bill or mm -hmm. working legislatively towards some goal that might prevent similar situations from happening to other people. Mm -hmm. And from that, um, Senator Menendez got involved and he- re Local state senator. Right, local state Jose senator, Menendez, Senator Menendez right. from right up the street. He got involved with us and we started discussing ways that we can help prevent this in the future. Mm -hmm. And there was a situation that had unfolded probably about six months before David passed away in which uh, Matt Vasquez, a uh, student who had, was undergoing chemotherapy, was getting really aggressively bullied for his appearance after undergoing chemo. Mm -hmm. uh, people would take his photos, take photos of him that his family was sharing to get him support. They would take those photos, they would manipulate them, um, talk about his appearance, mm -hmm. and then it, they went as far as giving, explaining different ways for him to take his own life, telling him why he should do it, that he needs to do it to help make everybody else feel better around him. So it was a really terrible thing that he went through. And then David, so shortly after the situation happened, taking his own life only helped fuel the fire. Mm -hmm. So um, tell us how your family came to uh, kind of really galvanize support and how the family feels now about this being a, 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 an adequate and really helpful way to continue David's legacy and help others? So we didn't really have to do a whole lot of effort on our part to get support. People came out of the woodwork from everywhere. Um, this is an issue that so many people face, that so many, uh, everybody faces at some point in their lives as a student, in that those who grow up to have children, those children will face those issues as well. Mm -hmm. And these issues, they've been around forever, um, and they will continue to be around. But what we're trying to do is prevent cyberbullying in particular, because this is something that is pervasive, that has become a has almost become a normalized social phenomenon mm -hmm. and we are trying to pivot society away from that um during today uh, talking to senator menendez he uh he gave a soundbite today which I, I really liked he mm -hmm. said that the reason we create laws is to set boundaries for our society and i think by setting those boundaries will be better able to direct society in a more positive way. So what would uh, David's Law actually do? It, it first of all, defines cyberbullying and then uh, makes it a criminal offense. What does it do? So it does, it, it defines cyberbullying and then there's, it affects th the three different components of the law. The criminal code, the education code, and the, um, the uh, civil code. Mm -hmm. And there's different parts to all those things. Um, we want to get the schools more involved in uh, the cyberbullying because it grossly affects every individual who goes through it mm -hmm. at school. Just because it doesn't happen between the hours of 8 to 3 on school grounds, it still affects them at school in a very negative way. Um, and during this sort of thing it causes a lot of emotional distress. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't cause anyone to take their lives. It, taking someone, someone taking their lives is a very multivariable thing. You can't point to one event and say this is what caused right, it. Right. So this will help to eliminate the uh, sort of the peer-to-peer -peer abuse that mm -hmm. can be a contributor in a lot of cases. Um, so our goal is to get the schools more involved. Okay. Um, so it, it basically defines cyberbullying as. It, what, what would the definition be? Um, so you have to look it up. Okay. I can't tell you okay. what the exact definition but it's, it's is. Defined, it's defined. It's a little wordy. And then it elevates once someone is identified as being the source of cyberbullying, that is a misdemeanor, or how is that classified? Right. So originally we wanted a state felony for the very severe cases mm -hmm. of bullying. Mm -hmm. There was a case a couple of years ago. This is a very uh, unique case in which it was a, uh, it was a couple. It was a, a, a boy and a girl mm -hmm. who, were, who were dating. I think they were probably about 16 years of age. And uh, the boyfriend became suicidal at, at some point, and he was talking about taking his life to his girlfriend. And instead of her, you know, pushing him in a positive direction, she said that he should do it. 
and started giving him ways to do it, telling him that he should do it. There was one case when he was trying to back out of it, but she told him to get back in the car and finish it, that everybody would be better because of it. And, you know, I can only assume that she was doing this because of the, uh, you know, she would get a lot of publicity. She would get a lot of, um, you know, as bad as it is to say, probably a lot of likes on her next Instagram photo. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to say what goes through someone's mind. Right. To, um, to drive them to... Uh, become a cyber bully. Right, right. In this case, it was so much worse than that. Yeah. But that's why we had the, the felony charge in there mm -hmm. to begin with. That has yeah. now since been taken out. Um, so this would, uh, obviously, once it goes through, if and when it goes through and gets signed by the governor, would become a statewide law. Correct. In your research or as you prepared to uh, make this push, did you find out about other laws in other states? Is this there happening are. across there, the There country? are. There's, um, I can't give you an exact number, uh -huh. but between 10 and 20 other states have adopted a cyberbullying law. Okay. Some have names like I think Maryland has Grace's law mm -hmm. and other states have similar laws that have been put into place in the last, you know, three or four years. Mm -hmm. Now it's harder to do that in Texas because Texas meets every other year. Right. And in this this society, right. this technical this technical technological blossoming society that we live in today, it's important that we keep mm -hmm. up with technology. So the good news is let us know, kinda of give us an update on where David's law stands right now. We had some good news uh, for your, your cause today in Austin, right? Right, we had very good news. Had the best news we've had in a long time. We, uh, Senator Menendez was on the floor today, gave a phenomenal speech. Um, as I was watching him give that speech, I couldn't help but think about a time when uh, David had a conversation with my mom. He was asking her why no one could help him. Mm. And at that time, we were doing the best that we could to mm -hmm. switch him schools, do everything that we could to help him feel comfortable in the environment that he was in. Now, he was, what he was referring to was the school system. Why couldn't the mm -hmm. school, why is he having to move schools? He was the victim, he wasn't the aggressor. Right. Uh, he was upset about that. Why couldn't law enforcement help him? Why couldn't anyone stop the people that were abusing him? Mm -hmm. And uh, as I was thinking about that, Sam Hernandez was giving this awesome, this amazing speech. Um, and I couldn't help but think that he was being the hero that David needed two years ago mm -hmm. before he passed away. Right. And then the vote ended up being 31, to zero. Unanimous. Unanimous right. across party lines. And the great thing, as I was watching this unfold on the floor of the Senate today, you had people from both party lines get up and speak. And it, they weren't just talking, they were firm mm -hmm. in their stance in support of David's law. So what next? So it's passed through the Senate. What next? So it's passed all the way through the Senate. There is now a current bill in the House, so, uh, a, ver a similar bill, a version mm -hmm. of David's law that has, is, there are slight differences. But it was passed out of the House, uh, the Pub Ed Committee in the House. And that current bill is now sitting in the House. What we would like to do is we would like to switch that bill with the bill that was just approved by the Senate. Mm. We want to help get that pushed through. And if there's any sort of changes, then it'll go on to a, a different committee. And then... To blend the two. Right, to blend the right, two. Right. right. Mm -hmm. um, and and that, that's a... Uh, well, after that, it goes back to the, the House and back to the Senate. Mm. And then if both of those approve it, then it goes to the governor. Mm -hmm. And that, realistically, is there a timeline when that could realistically happen? Not that I could give you. Yeah. 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 Someone in Austin probably Someone could. Someone in Austin yeah. could, for sure. But uh, bottom line is, uh, good news for your family and for all the supporters of this bill uh, Great news today. for everybody. Great news for parents, for kids, everywhere. Right, right. And looking forward to continued momentum Absolutely. through the end of the legislative session. Absolutely. Okay. Cliff Molek, thank you so much for Absolutely. coming. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate your help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.